please hand me the remote. Thanks, buddy. Welcome to another in-depth review here on Stern Home Reviews. I'm amazed by all your subscriptions from all over the world. Thank you so much for your support, everybody. Please do join the conversation in the comment section and share your thoughts, ideas, and inspiration for future videos. I read all your comments and I try to answer as appropriate, but please direct professional consulting inquiries to my mail that can be found in the channel info. A lot of my preferred tracks used for evaluation and enjoyment uh, during my listening sessions are available from the link in the description, created as a playlist. If I refer to specific tracks in the reviews, you can most likely find them there for your own listening pleasure. The playlist is also great to sample before or after my sound reviews in order to get mm, on the same page, and it's constantly updated. Today, we are going on what feels like a journey back in time. Yes, people, I'm going analog in this review. Let me start by saying that I have always been impressed with the craftsmanship and culture surrounding Japanese premium and higher-end hi-fi products. Japanese brands that have been in the game for many decades, like Technics, Rotel, Luxman, Yamaha and others, all have statement high-end products in their product portfolios. That really brings their best uh, to market at what appear to be very fair prices when compared to more exotic and lower production number brands. For this review, I'm surrounding myself with the best that the legendary brand Yamaha has to offer that, to my surprise, is celebrating everything analog. Meaning that what they offer in their top end is the total opposite of techniques that has refined digital from end to end to the extreme with the reference class products. This is very interesting as Yamaha is a big player in the professional audio market where they have been very creative for over 100 years with instruments, studio and PA equipment. Their digital gear is among some of the most innovative and they were first to bring affordable digital effects and mixers to market decades ago. Their consumer AV division has been very digital. Who doesn't remember, for instance, the 10,000 series that in the 80s brought very cool DSP features to the digital crazed hi-fi enthusiasts and yuppies. Fast forward to 2017 and Yamaha goes totally old school in their pursuit of natural sound that taught your reviewer here a thing or two about the emotional response that hi-fi systems can be capable of. The Yamaha 5000 system that is the subject of this review consists of the 8000 euro C5000 preamplifier, the 8000 euro M5000 power amplifier, the 15000 euro NS5000 speakers, and the mighty 8300 euro GT5000 turntable. For the review, I have used my trusty sources, the Cocktail X45 Pro and the Sony HAP Z1 ES as well as the GT5000 turntable. I have made a separate quick and dirty video that compares it to the Technics SL1200 GAE, including recorded sound comparison using the same cartridge and preamp. So what is it with Japan and the fascination of the piano black hyper glossy finish? Well, it's probably one of the hardest finishes to achieve and the faintest imperfection will show right away. The NS5000 speakers and the GT5000 turntable are finished in layers and layers of paint lacquer, polished to perfection, and the 5000 series uh, amplifier components have sides with the same mirror shine. 
It all looks uh, very nice, but is highly sensitive to fingerprints and dust and might therefore not be OCD friendly or CDO friendly if you're... The assembly quality of the casing surpasses that of the Technics R1 system I have reviewed previously. Look at the beautifully machined cutouts in the top plates for ventilation and the quality of the assembly and glass. All the buttons have an extremely satisfying mechanical feel that makes it a real pleasure to engage with. And that is also followed up by razor sharp precision. You won't find any imbalances between the left and right channels in the volume control. These are real statement components that pays tribute to the best of old school hi-fi component traditions that any seasoned music lover should feel instantly connected to. Just look at the C5000 preamp for example. It's just like an echo from generations past, like seeing the CA1000 from the early 70s again. Interestingly, 50 years later, Yamaha has even simplified the features available in direct comparison with the old grandfather. I find it refreshing that Yamaha, as the super digital innovators the company really are, choose to go that classic analog route with their high-end hi-fi offering for music in the home. Again, it stands in very strong contract to the pursuit of digital perfection that Techniques took with their reference series that came out around the same time. This in itself makes for a fascinating comparison from a technical point of view in a time where the streaming amplifier seems to be the dominant new hi-fi device everywhere. So let's dive in, explore the experience, the features, the differences, the quirks and most importantly, the sound experience. The analog approach automatically makes it straightforward to set up a 5000 system. No internet connections, firmware, touch displays, updates, user interface or setup menus. Everything you need to operate has a button and no computers required. We have forgotten how satisfying that really is in all sorts of ways. You instantly notice that the 5000 system has balance connections throughout, even for the turntable, which is uh, something usually only seen with super high-end phono stages and exotic turntables. Pretty rare to see. The preamp has both balanced and unbalanced inputs. In fact, two balanced line inputs plus a balanced or unbalanced external input from, say, a home cinema system, as well as numerous extra line inputs. There's also a dedicated a recording output that bypasses the volume and tone controls. The phono states can also support two turntables if one of them is connected with balanced cables. From a switch in the front, you can select between MM or MC amplification. We also has the option to set the resistance to match uh, with most MC cartridges in four steps ranging from 10 ohms to 300 ohms. While on the subject of connectivity for turntables, I love that the preamp also has a subsonic filter, sometimes also referred to as a rumble filter, to remove very low unwanted frequencies that can unnecessarily stress the amplifiers and speakers. The filter is very mild, only cutting about 3 dBs at 15 Hz. So it's not going to affect the ability to reproduce the deepest bass on any record. The preamp also has a simple tone controls for bass and treble with well-chosen center frequencies at 350 Hz and 3.5 kHz. The bass control will be adding more punch uh, than actual deep bass and the treble control adds more presence than it does add air. A really cool feature about the tone controls is that they defeat automatically when set to neutral. No need for an extra button here to bypass the tone control circuit when not in use. That's really smart. On the output side, I simply love to find that there's three 
output pairs, not counting a separate line out for the recording purposes. The cool thing about the vast number of outputs is that uh, they are selectable individually or all together, meaning that these can be used to switch between three amp speaker systems, uh, which we exploited a lot during the listening sessions, or it can be used in the case of biamping, active crossovers, sound processors uh, and the like. The C5000 preamp uh, will be able to accommodate most scenarios with ease. We also find a couple of trigger outputs, IR uh, in out for custom installations and more. On the front panel, we have the option to change the gain structure of the amplifier with a built-in attenuator. Very clever as it means that you can adapt the C5000 to the sources you use even if they have a very high output to ensure maximum headroom throughout. Especially with balanced gear, uh, the nominal output and input levels can vary a lot as uh, multiple standards exist when utilizing uh, balanced XLRs. Uh, the same thing goes for the built-in headphone amplifier that can be adapted to drive even heavy headphones with a gain switch giving up to 12 dBs of extra gain, which turned out to be just the ticket when used with a set of Sennheiser HD800 headphones that sounded glorious with the C5000. I actually compared the headphone amp with the one on the Cocktail Audio X45 Pro, and the C5000 is miles ahead. I like the feel of the C5000 volume knob, and it's even motorized for remote control. Sweet. The only thing that I find a little weird is the choice of a dimmer function that dims the volume by pulling a button and it goes about it pretty slowly and uh, by amount relative to the volume you're playing at. Hmm. If somebody rings the doorbell, you would want to instantly lower the volume to a certain level and it will be much faster just to grab the volume knob instead of using the slow dim function. It's a random, silly and unnecessary feature, if you ask me. The remote control for the C5000 is not as exclusive feeling uh, as example the one offered by Technics for their reference components. And the vast array of functions for controlling Yamaha source equipment just reminds you that they currently have no source components for sale. Bugger. Besides that, the C5000 is very well equipped with tasteful functions and has enough in and out to suit even more experimental or nerdy setups. And we like that. The only thing I'm truly missing is a mono button. Being able to mono the left and right channel is great when listening to mono recordings on vinyl with a stereo setup or when investigating phase issues. The silly volume dimmer button would be better utilized as a mono button in my humble opinion. A lot of attention has been given to the circuit design, which is entirely mirrored and symmetrical, uh, giving the best conditions for big and deep sound staging. The C5000 even has two transformers, one to supply each channel, with brass shielding throughout. The biggest feature of the C5000 preamp is that it's completely analog. That means no DSP wizardry, built-in DACs, digital volume control, Wi-Fi or the likes. What we have here is traditional high-end analog gear with a huge frequency range and analog sound tuning by skilled engineers. I think it's safe to say that no preteen computer programmers have been involved in the making of the 5000 series. For audio connoisseurs with the several source components, it means that the sound signature of each component you connect to it is preserved, as you will always be listening to the DA conversions and electronics in the source device. This is in contrast with digital-only amplifiers like the Linkdorf MP50, uh, where you would always connect the uh, sources digitally and therefore would always be listening to the DAC inside the amplifier, which would make your digital sources sound very much alike, as the DAC in the amp sets the bar for the sound. 
The first thing I noticed when connecting different players to the C5000 was that they offered strong personalities I really hadn't heard in a while, since I've been using a digital preamp for some time. The sonic signature of each stack inside the digital players can now be enjoyed, and this bring out each device's personality. They kind of become subtle colors you can choose between depending on how they suit the music you want to hear. This could be the sole reason for going analog for some, and one of the strongest reasons for me. But the analog approach is also hard, as the manufacturer has to be very aware of noise of any kind, including interference, which, especially today with all kinds of digital devices like Wi-Fi access points, tons of radio signals, mobile phones, and a noisy electrical grid in the house, it can be a real problem. I have several times uh, seen these kind of problems with clients using very expensive exotic audio gear that was not constructed in a way that could uh, efficiently suppress noise from the outside world of radio waves and AC lines. With the Yamaha C5000 and M5000, I have not been able to provoke any kind of interference due to the very sturdy, low impedance and brass shielded analog design. The components are simply dead silent. Even when putting a mobile phone on top of the amplifier and making a call so the internal uh, transmitter is running at full power, the background is bliggity black blackness, as in total silence, even at full gain. The black the black round is black, so bliggity, bliggity black. That, that's pretty silent, yeah. The C5000 delivers a delicious smooth sound and has a very tactile user experience. I love it. It is worth considering as a preamp on its own if you are in the market for an analog uh, preamp, old school style. The M5000 power amplifier brings a classic high-end amplifier feel with the same delicious build quality, high-quality glass and old-school meters. It weighs in at a respectable 27 kilos and offers 200 watts of class AB power rated at 4 ohms. The amp can also be bridged, which I also tried since I had access to a second M5000. Effectively, becoming a monoblock with twice the power. But this can only be recommended for use with speakers with a minimum of 8 ohms nominal impedance. The design of the M5000 is simply the way it has been done for many decades, drawing from all the experience of class AB designs, using the best components and again, a huge Toro dial uh, transformer. The power amp meters has different meter modes that can be set to peak, VU, off, or what I would call party mode, where the light pulsates in a disturbing manner without the meters moving. What's the fun in that? The peak mode is very fast, giving you great insight to, into the actual power requirements needed with fast transients in the music. The power amp also offers two sets of speaker output terminals, so it can drive an extra set of speakers, which is uh, very convenient and could uh, be used for an extra uh, listening zone or biamping or to be able to conveniently compare different speaker systems side by side. It's really practical. The big terminals accept pretty thick cables as well as banana blocks. I feel that the power available can be a challenge depending on the music being played. When playing very dynamic, lively material at re very realistic levels, I can't help but feel that the loudest transient peaks are being compressed a bit or ev I even hear a little faint clipping. 200 watts of sustained uh, power at 4 ohms is a lot for a class AB amplifier and will drive 
the majority of speakers to insane levels with today's pop music. But when you play truly dynamic acoustic material at what I call realistic levels, there's simply not enough headroom power for my taste in combination with the not particularly uh, sensitive speakers used here, forcing me to play not as subjectively loud as I would like in the most extreme cases. I think the M5000 is quite a looker and it reveals the same lovely sonic signature that I find in the C5000 preamp. The last 5000 series component is the glorious GT5000 turntable. It's a magnificent looking big daddy weighing in at 27 kilos. It's belt driven, it has a short straight tone arm and features balanced outputs. It pays homage to the grand Yamaha turntables of the 70s and 80s. I cover this turntable in full and do a little samurai warrior showdown, including sound comparisons, comparing it to what could be called its total technical opposite. Check out the quick and dirty GT5000 review video in the description below. The wonderful looking NS5000 speakers pays homage to the legendary NS1000 speakers that first uh, hit the market in 1974 to great acclaim. The sound of the NS1000 was so impressive at the time that they were chosen by several broadcasters for monitoring purposes. Lots of things has happened since uh, then in loudspeaker design, but Yamaha has again decided to use evolution instead of revolution, holding uh, on to a traditional three-way box design, and thank you Lord for that. In a world of tall and slim speakers, it is refreshing and distinctive looking speakers, yet modern in my opinion. Yamaha has used computer modeling and the latest materials to optimize the old school three-way bookshelf design. It now features a 12-inch woofer, a magnificent 3-inch dome uh, mid-range driver, as well as a 1-inch dome uh, treble driver. Drivers are made from Cylon, a synthetic polymer with amazing properties set to be stiffer than steel. The whole thing is finished in the precious uh, piano ultra high quality lacquer we also see on the other components. The included stands are an important part of the sound tuning and should always be used, resulting in a speaker that presents itself uniquely in the room. For protection, uh, Yamaha has made uh, custom magnetic grills for each driver to protect them from itchy kitties or the silent loving house cat. Bass response from the speakers can be tuned by adjusting the distance to the back wall and or by using foam to block the backfiring port in two different levels. And now let's talk about the sound of these speakers. It is very important to note that the experience of sound is extremely subjective. So what I present here is merely my experience in comparison with some other speakers that might not even be remotely in the same price class. The performance is experienced in my room and the mood I was in that day, uh, as well as uh, with my own preferences and musical taste coloring it all. So now that you know that you probably can't use my sound experience for anything other than making you curious, uh, then let me tell you right away that the sound reaching your ears from these speakers are wonderful, despite the old school concept. Bass response is pretty punchy and tight, uh, with enough low end response to deliver authority the natural tonality in the mid-range is simply stunning and I love the overall presentation that is very musical, open and clear. I've not been able to reach listening fatigue uh, despite listening to them for days on end 
and they never try to impress you with theatrical bloated sound, but instead deliver the music in a very insightful way, no matter if you play subtle or loud, and more importantly, no matter the genre of music. I especially noticed how enjoyable many tracks I would usually skip on the Technics R1 speakers were. With the NS5000 and the 5000 series pre and power amps combo, the result is a lot of foot tapping and pure musical enjoyment. The word that kind of summed it all up was harmonious sound. I'm left with the impression that the speakers are tuned with the 5000 system amped uh, in mind, to be honest. Listening through the ears of the analytical sound engineer, the very own mid-range has a significant presence boost that for most listeners will probably be translated as clarity when playing at lower volume. This boost uh, becomes too much when used with the new prime amplifiers and was subject to a lot of A-B listening to determine if we liked it or not. I found I adjusted to it pretty quickly and it served a lot of music very well, especially at lower volume where most people listen most of the time. What, what did you think about the vocals there? Yeah, less, uh, less pushy in the uh, higher mid-tones. Uh, so it suited it better, and on the smaller 3000s, then it started to get a little bit muddy in the, in the lower mid-tones that I wasn't aware of on the others. So there was a closer match, um, but still I feel the, the presence boost in the um, 1 to 2 kilohertz a little bit distracting on the 5000s. So let's talk more and explore in depth about the listening sessions and comparisons with the NS5000s. Uh, it has been a quite a lot of back and forth over a longer period of time, as the 5000s perform very differently depending on, on their placement. Naturally, uh, a lot of listening time went into comparing the NS5000 to the now discontinued uh, Technics R1 speakers and the Yamaha NS3000 two-way bookshelf speaker. I did a lot of experimenting with the placement of both speakers, giving me very different results. It was almost a battle back and forth between two pretty different sonic signatures, where the NS5000 come out in some cases as the most enjoyable and other times vice versa, making it very hard for me actually to be definitive in my subjective experience. The NS5000 delivers this amazing mid-range with vocals sounding extremely natural and pronounced. Again, the optimal performance is very placement critical. I found it that you really had to practice focused listening in between the speakers with your ears at the perfect height or sit further away to enjoy the most cohesive sound. With the R1, you have a very even dispersion of the sound uh, that will sound balanced in a much wider area, but also uh, give you a very tight sweet spot for the biggest and most accurate soundstage. The NS5000 are not capable of rendering quite as big a soundstage as they are once, but that is to be expected given the traditional design of the NS5000. But with a little experimenting and some toe-in, sitting closer to the NS5000, I got a very nice and engaging soundstage, even though it can match the size and instrument separation of the soundstage presented by the R1s. To me, the big Yamahas is a really pleasant all-round experience. It's a speaker that grows and grows on you, and I think many listeners will find the extra presence very satisfying at real-world uh, playback levels. It's never harsh or hard. It's more like what the speaker does exceptionally well is being shown off and, and enhanced a bit. The longer you listen, the more you will really appreciate how good it is. The Technics offers more upper bass detail and even more low extension, 
but at the sacrifice of punch. Snappy bass drums can sound very different on these two speakers and become, it becomes very uh, apparent when, for example, in, uh, listening to a track like Steely Dance, Hey 19 from the Gaucho album. The presentation simply is more engaging on the NS5000s. In short, it's a great example of uh, why sound is so interesting. Two great speakers with the same objective can have very different tonality and priorities. That said, the SUR1 is capable of creating serious goosebumps when it comes to hyper-realistic reproduction of acoustic instruments and sonically perfect recordings. And it actually also does very well with big lush electronica tracks. But when uh, serving Dr. Dre's uh, 2001 album on them, they can feel like they overthink things a bit, uh, which can take away some of the musical enjoyment by being in your face with all those imperfections. That's where I think the NS5000 shows an enjoyment balance, no matter the content. They're not sugarcoating the music, but they have a nice, dry and firm, punchy sound with a superb, silky, never aggressive top end with that mid-range clarity. Uh, I have seldom heard better. The mid-range itself is very detailed, maybe even better than the SUR1, but at, a, at the expense of what I would call instrument separation and the risk of too much presence in the mid-range, uh, if not placed right, and combined with the right gear. In my room, I wish for 60B's extra dynamic power uh, with very demanding dynamic tracks. For anyone living in an uh, apartment or only listening to rock or pops, uh, this will probably never be an issue. But in my case, and for others loving hyper-realism, it might be, especially when sitting further away from the speakers. It does not take away from the fact that this is a speaker that performs wonderfully with everything from classical and jazz to hip-hop, EDM and pop. Just bring it and the NS5000 will deliver great music. The Yamaha 5000 series offering is a brave old-school move from a mainstream manufacturer that convincingly takes us back to the simpler days of analog hi-fi. It pays homage to the past and delivers what one could only dream of in the 70s with its modern construction, quality computer-assisted design, and use of modern high-tech materials. I think that Yamaha has found a fantastic musical balance that is quite addictive and made me explore further and wider into my musical repertoire than ever before. The components look and feel extremely satisfying and long-lasting overall, but I would personally love to see other finish options than the black lacquer uh, that we get here in the EU market. So what if the 5000 system is just a bit too steep for your wallet? Well, the 5000 system has a less high-rolling family that I had a chance to compare with the 5000 system under the same conditions. The 6100 euro Yamaha S3200 integrated amplifier offers the same philosophy and convincing musical performance in an integrated package with a little fewer features. There's also the 10,700 euro NS3000 bookshelf speakers with its included stands that I found reminding me a bit of the dry sound of the famous NS10 studio monitor, but more sophisticated and with better resolution and imaging. Interestingly, I have read reviews that claim that the NS3000 sounds like an NS5000, but with less bass. Nothing can be further from my experience comparing them side by side. The NS3000 holds their own and, and might even offer better imaging. But do not think of them as a pair of mini NS5000 when it comes to the subjective power and that mid-range deliciousness. As always, try them out for extended time with the music you love 
and remember to just listen. Thank you very much to Marcus Carlson from Yamaha Scandinavia and Top Sound in Copenhagen for providing the review samples. If you're interested in the Mighty GT 5000 turntable, be sure to check out the separate review uh, I did on that. You find it in the description below or somewhere around here. Your tap, tap, tap and your subscription is highly appreciated. Thank you so much for helping growing the channel and see you soon.